Okay, so I think I'll go ahead and just start with our typical announcements and reminders. So let's go over to our Canvas page. So for today, again, we're Zooming for a little while longer. And then you'll notice under today's module, I did post another activity. So what I have planned is I'm going to give a short lecture. I'll do a couple of examples. And then I want you all to work on this activity. So here in a few moments, I'll put you into breakout groups and you can work through these problems. Let me go ahead and open it so that you know what it looks like. So properties of logarithms, we'll go through these properties, look at some examples, and then you'll work on these problems. You'll notice that the answers are posted, but I would like for you to try on your own piece of paper to work through these before you look at the solutions. So I'll show you these properties and then we'll have you work on those and I can come out to each breakout group and help you if you need. Also, don't forget that your My Open Math homework is due section 6.3 this evening. So I did postpone that. It was originally due Friday, but I thought I'd give you over the weekend to continue working on that as we haven't covered the properties yet. So again, before we get started, are there any questions? Okay, so if not, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these log properties. So this is just continuing with section 6.3. So recall, we had our basic exponential function. And in general, we can write it as b to the y equals x. And then its inverse is the log function, log base b of x equals y. So again, just switching domain and range. Then we looked at um, compositions, and we have three other properties. So the first one is called the product property. So the idea here is if you have a single logarithm that's expressed as a product in the input, you can separate this into two different logs that to turn into a summation. So products turn into sums. Now, oftentimes what you'll end up doing is you'll have maybe multiple logarithms that you need to combine into a single logarithm to solve an equation. So if we have it for products, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that we also have it for quotients. So log base B of the division So maybe somebody using their mic or the chat, what do you suppose will happen with division? If products turn into sums, what do you think quotients will do? I'll give you a hint, it looks very similar. Anybody want to take a guess what should go here? Subtraction. Yeah, exactly. So again, the idea is maybe you have two logs that are being subtracted. 
you need to combine them into a single log. Therefore, you can solve an equation. And then the one that's used most often is the power rule. So this one looks like log b of x to the r. And then you just bring the exponent out in front. So if you do have an exponent, you can remove it by just pulling it outside. So these are three key properties that you'll need to know for logs. Let's take a look at a couple of examples, and then I'll have you guys try some. So in this example, let's evaluate the following. Let's do for part A, log base two of 80 minus log base two of five. So another thing that I wanted to point out with those properties, the bases have to match. If the bases don't match, you cannot combine them. So just make sure that that happens. And then we just stated we could write this as a single logarithm, base two. Subtraction turns into division. So just take your inputs and divide them. Now I have log base two, and this divides into 16. And then if we're trying to evaluate exactly, let's convert 16 so that it has the same base two. And in order to do that, we'll need it to the fourth power. And again, the whole point of doing that is when you compose a logarithm with an exponential, they undo each other, and you're left with just the exponent four. So right here is where we used our difference property. And then let's try maybe one more example. Let's do log base three of one over 27. So the first thing that I will note is that I can rewrite 27 as one over three cubed. Now for the bases to match, I need to bring the three cubed up into the numerator. And I do that by negating the exponent. Now my bases match, they will undo each other and I'm left with just minus three. So this could be considered like a power rule. You could bring the minus three out in front and then these would turn into a one. Um, it's all kind of the same, whether it's cancellation or power rule. Any questions with those two examples? Okay, so then what I thought I would do is I will do a couple of problems from the activity. So again, if you go into your Canvas page under Monday, you have your PDF and you can open it either as a PDF or just right in your browser. So a lot of these are very similar to what I had just done with the last two examples. So products turn into addition, quotients turn into subtraction, use your power rule accordingly. But what I would like to do is maybe get to some of these little more complicated ones. So let's 
condense these into a single expression. So maybe I'll do number 18. So two log of seven over three. And let me go ahead and just put this back on my whiteboard. So if I were looking at a problem like this, the first thing that I would do is I would strip that fraction out in front. So that's just another way of rewriting the same problem. Now what you can do is use your power rule and bring that up here as an exponent. So log seven to the two thirds. And then for practice, let's write this as a root. So log and then the root would be seven on the inside and then three on the outside and then square it. And finally, if we simplify it one more step, we would have log cube root of 49. Are there any questions with number 18? Okay, so I think what I would like to do is, again, just share screen the Canvas page. So I want you to open up this PDF, either in your browser or as an actual Adobe document. I'm going to put you in breakout groups. I think um, it looks like there are about 14 of us. So maybe I'll do groups of three. I would like for you to work on as many as you can. And then towards the end of class, I'm going to bring us back together and I'll have each group present a problem. So are there any questions with directions? What I would like for you to do is maybe pick one person in your group that could share screen and you could all work on the problems together. So you'll do them on your own page, but maybe try them as a group. So turn on your microphones, turn on your cameras, share screen. I'll come around to each group. And then if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me and I'll come to your specific group. Okay, so as soon as you get the invite, go ahead and join your group and then work through these and then we'll present at the end of class. Jeffrey, I see you're still in the main session. Do you need help with anything? Nathan, did you just join or did you get kicked out?
Okay, so Nathan, um, here's what I had in mind. Um, let me go ahead and just share screen. So what I would like for you to do is go into your Canvas page and under today's Zoom session, so week 10, Zoom Monday, if you go in here, there's a PDF of problems that I would like for you to be working on. So what I had hoped is that in each different section, um, somebody would maybe share screen and you could work on the problems together because I am going to ask each group to present one problem. So let me get you back into another breakout group. I think you were in group three. Maybe you could take some initiative and share screen and we can get everybody on board. So let me go ahead and get you back in there, Nathan. Um, So do you have an invitation, Nathan? Okay, let's see. What I'll do is maybe I'll move you into another room. So I'm gonna put you in room five. So you might be with just different people. Yeah, if you can just go ahead and join it, that's fine. Let me go ahead and just send you another invitation.
Hey, sorry. I just like logged in. Okay. I did not we would be late, but okay. I, yeah. Thank you. So, yep. So here's what we got going on for today. Let me go ahead and just share screen. If you go into Monday's Zoom under week 10, there's a PDF document that I'm having students work on. So I'm okay. going to put you into a breakout group and you can maybe get caught up with them. And I'll let you work for maybe another 10 to 13 minutes. And then I'm going to bring everybody back and have each group present one problem. Okay. Thank you so much. Yep. No problem. So let me get you invited into one. Okay. I will put you in room three. So go ahead and just get on board with them. Um, I know sometimes it can be a little bit quiet in there. So if you need to take some initiative and just start chatting with people and try to get caught up. Okay, sounds good, thank you. You're welcome.
Hi. So you just wanted to do, um, sorry if I scared you, but um, like the number you're putting for groups, like so for group two, we do number 12? Correct. So I want you to work on as many as okay. you can, but you're only mm -hmm. yeah. number 12. Okay, yeah. That's what I was making sure of. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so welcome back, everybody. So what I would like to do is just maybe have you guys walk me through the solutions for these problems. So from group one, do I have a volunteer to help me? Anybody from group one? I can volunteer, but I don't know how to do it. Okay, so yeah. I'll get you started. The first thing that I would do is I would convert this into a third route. And then if you wanna help me, the volunteer, what do I do with the power? What happens to the exponent? Does it become the base? So it comes out in front. Okay. So it'll do this. That's according to our power rule. So I have one third times the log of this stuff. So that's kind of step two. So the first thing I did is turn it into a cubic root. And then I pulled it out in front. Now, what happens to products? What do products turn into? Anybody remember? You can type it in the chat if you'd like. Do they turn into fractions? They turn into sums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one third out in front and I'm going to multiply it by log of x plus log of y plus log of z. So that was that first rule that I introduced, the product rule. And it says if you have products, you can break them apart. So because I had three different variables, I have three different logs. And then lastly, I can distribute the one third. So one third log of x plus one third log of y. plus one third 
log of z. And now I have satisfied everything that we set out to do. We wanted to take the original log and expand it into three different logs. Yeah, good. So it looks like there are a couple people who did the same thing. So now what I would like to do, we've done question 11. Let's try question 12. So the, yeah, it might have been a slightly different problem. It looks pretty similar. Let's try question 12. I'll go ahead and write that down. And we'll just get through as many as we can. So for question 12, we had, let me go ahead and just share screen this log of x times y times z squared. So this one is actually probably a little bit easier. So anybody from group two that wants to volunteer? Yeah, I just don't know how to um, explain it as well. Okay, so first of all, let's take care of the products. What do products turn into? Um, I don't know what they're called. So what symbol should I use if I do this and then I do this? Yeah, addition. yeah, addition. Products turn into sums. So I'd have this. So we're close. This one we can do in two steps. We're not quite there. This will stay the same. This will stay the same. And then what do I do with the exponent? You can bring it to the front of it. Yep, just bring it to the front. And now you're done. So when they say expand, they just want single inputs. And I know that I'm done because I no longer have an exponent. Let me skip around a little bit. We probably don't have enough time to do all of these, but maybe I can look at... Let's do, yeah, how about number 16? So this one was group four. We have log of two plus log of 11 plus log of seven. So for this second half of the worksheet, you're going in reverse. So rather than expanding, you are going to collapse these into a single logarithm. So when I look at this, again, just going backwards, addition turns into products. So I have log of two times 11 times seven. And in this case, uh, 22 times seven, Gives me 154. And then just some critical thinking. For most of these problems on the assignment, there wasn't a base given. So what is the base assumed to be? Good, excellent, Natasha. So if there is no base, you assume it to be 10. And excellent work, two times 11 times seven in the log, so log of 154, perfect. Okay, so we're about out of time for today. As usual, I will post this recording on my Canvas page, and then don't forget that you do have homework due this evening. And if you need any additional help, I do have office hours this afternoon. So if there are no further questions, have a great rest of your morning, and I will see you again on Wednesday. Thank you. Um, I had a couple follow-up questions. Sure. Um, when they were breaking apart the logs, I was a little confused because, so we did the first one, and I was trying to ask if the way that they wrote it makes it seem like each log was its own equation. So they had log, no base six plus log, no base 11. So I was just trying to figure out if each of those is, is its own equation that you would have to solve. 
so technically they're called expressions. So what okay. you what you would do if you were doing this exactly, uh, I'm sorry, approximately, is you just pull out your calculator and literally hit log and it'll already do base 10. So mm -hmm. you take log of six plus log of 11 and it'll give you something. So for these problems, I'm really just trying to get you to practice expanding or condensing. But if we wanted to know the actual answer, let me just go into my calculator. See if I can find it easily. These fa fancy calculators, here's a better idea. Let's do it this way. So we could do log of six plus log of 11. So technically, when you're doing it uh, the way that they're showing it on the solutions, they're doing it exactly. So they're not plugging it into a calculator. They're just leaving it alone. But if you wanted to, you could. Okay. Okay. And then, okay, I think that that was my main question. I just wanted to know if each log was its own, uh, was its own expression. And if you had to solve for, um, for like an individual, because the way that you break it up makes it look like you have to solve for each expression individually. You're add, it looks like you're adding log base 10, six plus log yeah. base 11. Yes. So what I, what I would do if I was doing this step by step, I would calculate log base 10 of six mm -hmm. and I would write that down. And then I would calculate log base 10 of 11 and I'd write that down. And then I add them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just wanted to know. I I wasn't sure if like that was correct or not, and that's the way that I was interpreting that. And then my last question is: Is log like does it represent a number or like what what is like does log like itself represent a number? It does not. So this is a really good question. So. Let's, I have just another minute or two here, but if you think about just functions in general, so mm -hmm. if you're talking about a function, you just have, I don't know, y equals some function f of x. Yeah. So you put in an input, right? F doesn't really matter. That's just what we call it because it's a function. Okay. So same thing goes with, I know we're not in trig, but you could do like sine of x, right? Sine is just a function. It just has a particular name and you feed it in a value. Logs work the same way. So it's just a function. The log itself doesn't have a number associated with it. What you have to do is you have to feed it something. So I don't particularly like this worksheet because it didn't do a very good job of using function notation. But mm -hmm. what you really had was something like this, right? You have to feed it in a value in order to get an output. But the part that I'm confused about is if log does, if if log itself is not a number, then why do we give it like a base? Like why why don't we just say 10 times six? What is the point of the log there? Like what is that supposed to be doing for us? Okay, so if it was just, I like your example. If it was 10 times mm -hmm. six, you'd have 60. Yeah. Right. But if you're doing log base 10 of six, I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm going to say it's probably around 1.2. I don't know exactly. I'm just making something up. So the yeah. idea is when you're taking a log, what you're doing is you're solving the exponential equation. Oh, so this okay. turns into log base 10 of six to the X, and then you're solving for X. So there's, okay. a big, there's a big difference between multiplying by 10 and taking a log. Okay, so it's like whatever, whatever power, whatever the power for the 10 is, is what's going to get you six. Yeah, exactly. So I would have to do some calculation. It's going to be something smaller than one. Mm -hmm. right? because if it was one, then we'd have 10. And if it was two, we'd have 100. So it's got to be something smaller than one. And whatever that is, that will get us our six. 
So that's what the log function is doing for you, is it's telling you what exponent do I need. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. I was I was just really confused by like what what the worksheet was telling us, but it sounds like I, I like understood it. So okay, thank yeah. You. And if you need any more help, I have office hours at two. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too.